Well, hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Kevin LaRue. I'm with SlickPick, and I'm joined uh, by my colleague and uh, also the founder of SlickPick, uh, Sam Burson. And uh, we're here to kind of fade into the background fairly quickly, but I wanted to just uh, say a few words about what we're doing here this morning and, um, and also introduce our guests. So SlickPick Academy is our monthly educational series, and, and really it's not about SlickPick necessarily. Uh, what we want to do is we want to educate, inform, inspire people to really kind of learn new things, do more with your photography, and expand your boundaries. And, and you know, in the past, we've had a few presentations uh, that you can uh, pick up uh, on, on our website, um, uh, infrared uh, with your iPhone, uh, AI and photography, really great uh, uh, presentations. Um, but today I'm really excited to talk about something that's a little bit more thematic. It's in the spirit of the holidays. And today we're, uh, the Academy is presenting Holiday Magic, Transforming Your Holiday Photos with Creative Post-Processing Techniques. Um, this is a, a topic that's near, to bear, near and dear to my heart because I've been uh, I've been a post-processing uh, nerd <laughs> for a while and uh, really love that part of the creative process. And so uh, these two folks are very good friends of, of Sam and I, um, Vanelli and Carly Sullins. So happy to have you guys here. Happy so to if, be you, here. if you don't know these folks, uh, A, you'll know them by the end of the webinar, but but you got to follow their work. Uh, so vanelli has been a, a, a photographer, an educator, an author, and an all-around good guy. For, for many years, I'm, I'm fortunate to have known him for well over a decade. Um, uh, be careful uh, when you get to know him in person, because I mean, I'm going to tell a little secret here, Vanelli, because he, he will he will stump you. He will figure out some way with misdirection to uh, to throw you off your game. And, and I love him for that. <laughs> anyway, he's a highly sought after speaker. You'll find him at many of the conferences. And he's also the director of education for Skylum Software. Um, and so again, if you don't know this guy, uh, you, you should, he'll be a big part of your life. Now, Carly Sullins is one of my newest BFFs. <laughs> I've known her for about six months, but but already have, have fallen in love with with her work and, and, and just her vibe. She's an artist and a photographer, and he's got a varied background in, in painting, art history, obviously photography, and even psychology. So all these things, kind of merge together and, and meld to, to inform her, you know, art, artistic and, and uh, creative visuals. And I think she's a perfect addition, a perfect balance to, to Vanelli uh, here uh, during this month's uh, Slick Pick Academy presentation. So welcome, folks. Glad to have you here. Uh, Vanelli, take it away. Well, hello, everyone. So um, Kevin and Sam, thanks so much for having us um, on this event. Now, Yes, I'm the director of education for Skylum, creators of, of Luminar. If you don't you have Luminar, you use Lightroom, Photoshop, or whatever. The techniques that we're going to teach you today, it, it it's cross-platform. Uh, the concepts are cross-platform. Some of the tools are specific to each you know software. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to have Carly start, but we're going to talk more about this holiday season. Carly is going to show you some killer storytelling and ways to take images to make them look like they were photographed in the wintertime. Then what I'll do is I'm going to show you some of the basic tools that Luminar has to offer so you can use them for any one of your, um, your images. All right. So what inspired this webinar today was that uh, Kevin asked me if I could come out and do this. And I thought, you know, it's the holiday season. Now is a perfect time as photographers. We really give back to our families. So you're going to have all your family and friends come on uh, all in one place. Now is a perfect time to start taking photos with them. You know, now is the time to create slideshows. Now is the time um, to relive old family um, stories and stuff. Me personally, I went and took my parents' wedding photos. They were all gray, dingy. It was scanned on a horrible HP all-in-one scanner that my father had something like 10 years ago. So I scanned them, brought them into Luminar Neo, and totally made them look 
as if they were just delivered to them. That's what I gave to my to my relatives last Christmas. So this Christmas, they all are going to come in and bring five to ten images for me to scan and work my magic with, which I'll show you how I did it. So that what's kind of inspired this is that us as photographers, we can create some amazing work. But let's make sure we do it with our family first. This way, all next year, they can do some pillar stuff. All right. So with that, Carly, you and I were talking about some of your amazing overlays and textures. Um, you said you put together some some neat stuff for us about holiday photos. Right. So uh, I think first we're just going to talk about a little bit of how to tell a story with your photos. And then we'll move into once you have captured those photos, how to edit them. Perfect. Okay. Great, I see your screen. Perfect. So, um, Kevin talked a little bit about me. My background is in art therapy. And in my art therapy education, I had to study all the art mediums, but I focused on fine art painting. So you're going to see that weaved into my work. I then later became a professional photographer. Um, I have some of my assets up on Luminar Marketplace. And then on the side, I'm also a U.S. Master Swimmer. Um, but my art therapy background is all integrated in what I do and how I teach. So that's kind of where we're going to start today of how to be um, tell a story with your photos. Um, there's some strategy to do that, to imprint yourself into your imagery. Um, so to do that, when you take a photo, you just you want to think about, of course, the technical skills. And, and that is taught everywhere, YouTube, lots of wonderful speakers teaching you the technical details of photography. But some things you want to keep in mind is how are you going to personalize this particular photo while you're out either in landscape or in your house? In what ways can you bring a little bit more of yourself into your photo? And that way you can then begin to imprint yourself into your photography that goes beyond technique. And once you start doing that, people will start picking that up. We don't live in a vacuum, we live as a collective. And even though our images are uniquely ourselves, are part of who we are. Um, we collectively, it surpasses our, our verbal, it surpasses language. So now your image, you can look at an image and you could pick up on some of the feelings, some of the thoughts without even having to articulate it. So that also brings me into emote. If you can symbolically put feelings into your imagery, how would you do that? How would that create impact into imagery? So beyond lighting, beyond rules of third, beyond color palette, is there a way that you could emote, put emotion into your holiday photos? So an example of that might be um, kids opening presents and getting that wow, raw image of that those emotions. Um, maybe you are making a dish of a loved one that's passed this holiday season. Could you photograph that cookies or pie, whatever that loved one made in a way that honors their memory? And when you start putting those emotions into the imagery, people will start feeling that too. And remember your experiences and characteristics make you unique, which will make your imagery unique. Oops. Photography can be a bridge for the most legitimate and beautiful exchanges. Images have a power to surpass verbal language barriers and connect us deeply and intimately intimately to ourselves and others when we start to let it happen. Um, and, and that can really create impact in our storytelling of our imagery. So I have some su su suggestions on how to do this. One is 
to create a visual arc. Um, so instead of saying, I want to capture this one image of my food or uh, my holiday decorations, think of it as in, I'm going to create multiple imagery of one thing, of one subject I'm studying. And what I mean by that is maybe start with wide angle, get the whole picture of what you're trying to capture. Then spend more time with that and go and highlight a specific detail of that whole. The next is focus on a different perspective in that moment. And this is where I have difficulty, but all awesome also that Sometimes the best photo comes when I push myself to look at it in a different angle. After you find a different angle, so these are all pretty much concrete, wide, get into the detail, try to find a different angle. Then you're going to go into more of the subconscious and maybe try to find a way to emotionally connect with what you're trying to photograph. Um, and then after that, maybe find something unexpected discovery, spontaneously encounters. What now? What after you did these four, where can you push yourself just a little bit different? Another way to um, add storytelling to your imagery around the holidays is um, use a simple word or a simple concept. When, as creatives, when we add limitations to our work, it actually helps us expand our creativity. It expands our boundaries and it helps us explore creativity and storytelling further. So a treasure hunt could be, if I tell you right now, explore light and how it's used during the holidays, I'm sure your mind is just going off with like, oh, okay, Christmas lights or a menorah or um, the way the winter sunlight's hitting um, my plants now. When I start focusing on something individual and narrowing it down, your mind can start going and expanding. So that's one idea. Traditions, explore your family personal traditions. Every family's unique, every person's unique around the holidays. How would you capture your traditions? Color is another one or absence of color. Um, how do you see color around the holidays? How do you see color right now out in, in the landscape? I love winter. I love winter colors. I love winter landscape. I love that muted, and especially when the sun's setting and it has that pinkish. Um, I find that very beautiful. If I say reflections, explore the concept of reflections. Again, your mind's probably going in different ways of how you can incorporate reflections. Texture is another one. You might have. A, a holiday tablecloth or lace, or um, if you have a tree, these are all different textures that you can go in and you can incorporate this into that visual art too. Now that you're finding a place to land with your photography, how can you even go a little bit further? And then I, I like to play with balance and symmetry. Um, how do you see balance? Is it balance, symmetry, or lack of balance? Those are unique ways to look at things. Once you capture these photos and you do a little more personalization and storytelling with your images, you can then get into the editing and Vanelli is going to teach you some ways you could edit your photos from these stories. And then we're going to loop back to me and I'll show you how to even take those editings and make it more creative if you wanted to. Thank you for that, Carly. I, I really appreciated the concept of, of um, creating limits, uh, actually expanding your mm -hmm. options and, and where your mind goes. So that was a cool concept I took away from that, so that part. All right. Hey, Carly, great job. I, up to this point, does anybody have any questions for Carly up to this point? All right. And by the way, to ask a question, if you don't mind, on the bottom of your screen, you'll see um, the reactions icon. Just click on that, and then you'll see raise hand, thumbnail, the thumb, and so on. I'm going to raise my hand so you can see it. And then there's that's how you would raise it. And then, of course, you can lower your hand when you're done. Yeah. All right. 
So let me grab the, the screen. And pull up Neo. There we go. All right. What I'm going to start with first is just the basics. All right. Um, let me reset that. Adjustment. Revert. There we go. So here, if, if you're new to any software editing, all right, keep in mind, um, there's nothing wrong with using the auto mode, just like on your camera. If you get confused with how a scene is presented in front of you, you're not quite sure what camera setting you should use, put it in auto mode, take a picture, read what the camera says. Well, that's kind of what I'm going to show you now. So here is a shot I took on the pool side. I just want to crop it first just to get it into a little uh, perspective. Great. Now I'm going to use just one tool. Under Essentials, I'll use Enhance AI. And can look at that as a an auto tool. Look at that. So I can adjust the sky and the image itself before, after. Just that one tool improves color, detail, tone, and depth of an image. So that's the first thing we need to do is just develop the image. So when you have an image in front of you, it's a great way just to develop it. So here's another way. I'll use this one right here. So instead of jumping into um, Accent AI or uh, Enhance AI here, so you know, I'll start out here for a minute. Look at that. That looks great. Well, let's undo that. I'm going to start with Develop. So Develop is very similar. It's camera raw, so you're used to seeing this. But what I want to do is I want to up my... Smart contrast. Then from here, enrich the black tones. I love how the grass is looking. Maybe bump up the whites a little bit. Take those highlights way down. And there I am. So before, after. Now I'm going to come in with enhance. Let's see what that does for us. That does a good job. Um, I'm going to go back to that develop for a moment. So under edits, think of this as history. I'm going to go back here. And what I want to do is be careful with the optics. I want to adjust for distortion and some of these here. And now what I want to do is take it, transform it. Look at that. One click. Boom. It made it upright and got it to what I needed. Good, and there's the very beginning part. And by the way, if you click on the bottom preview, you'll see before and after. All right? Now, this looks good. I can end it here or take it another step further. And by the way, each of these tools you see here, the category tells you what the tool is for. So if I want to get creative, I'll click on the creative category. And let's just say I want to relight the sky or change this guy. Well, for this photo, it actually gives suggestions on what it thinks a good sky would look like. I like that. And the rest of these tools, which we don't need to get into, are actually going to um, give us tweak, fine tweaking of that particular sky. All right? So I have the sky done. Now, I'm going to get a little creative with the lighting. Because the light closest to me is a little too bright. So watch this. Look how by changing what the lens sees, the brightness near, the depth shows it that the lens is closest looking maybe two or three feet into the scene. If I start doing this, look how it does a great job at removing the brightness of this area. So now watch watch close. If I show you before, after, look how the after guides your light right, right to the church. Now the background, look how I could light it independently. I'm going to light it just a little bit. All right. 
And you know what? Let me crop it while I'm here. There we go. All right. Now, we started with this. And with a real quick edit, we came up with this. Now, I want to do one more to it. And that's going to be the vignette. Choose. And look what it's doing for me. It's going to darken the areas around. And I'll come back to it. But look at that. I'm also able to light the center point. There. And I want to dial it back in such a way to where when you look at this, watch. Before, after. Look how it shoots some light onto that church and it draws your eye to the church. And at the same time, it doesn't look like, you know, we added a vignette to the tool or to the image. So before, after. All right. Let me do one more. So, again, what I'm trying to do here is show you the tools that we have. So when you apply them to your, your image, whether it's Christmas images or portraits of your family, you'll have a better understanding. So now that we did that with this, I'm going to jump over to power lines. If, if there's power lines in your shot, the easiest way to get rid of it is if the person move two or three feet off to the right, with the power lines or not. But in a case that that's not going to work, this is where erase comes in. So I'm going to click on erase, and that'll reveal these two um, additional tools. I'm going to click on power line. And then in a moment, what it's going to do, it's going to analyze the image, figure out where the power lines were. Look at that. Then delete them. Get rid of that little piece. Look at that. How amazing is that? All right. Now, you would think, since that was a complicated image, this image looks a little easier. So this image should be a piece of cake. Watch what happens. It's going to erase it for me. Power lines. It's going to erase it for me, but it may not do a perfect job. So that's where I'm going to show you how to use some of the features of the tool to fix it. But look, it did a great job here. Let me hide myself, sorry. So what I did was under erase, you know, I just clicked on a power line removal. Now what I'm going to do is come in and just select pieces of it to erase. But up here, I noticed it got a little too aggressive. So I'm going to paint over it. But instead of hitting erase, Let's hit restore. Oh, look at that. Look how it brought back the piece that I was missing. Now from here. Now I know there's no light. There's no, yeah, the light's not for there. And click erase. Yep. And there we have it. Did I get that part? I did. Restore, all right, and then just do fine-tuning. There it is. Now, keep in mind, what I just showed you there was in any tool, not just our tool. When you're dealing with the erase tool, it's better to take pieces of it, like this right here. Don't touch or intersect with the line or with what you don't want erased. I want to get as close as I can. And now let's just erase that. Then I'll, look at that. I'll do the same thing to the other side. Again, as close as I can without touching it. And there it is. Ready? Before. After. Let me get out of that way. Sorry, everyone. There we go. All right. So before and after all right so that's pretty cool now you have three tools three tools that we just worked with you have the accent ai 
Then you also have develop. And then we talked about the erase tool. All right. So that right there alone is going to get you. Sorry about that. Is going to get you um, uh, off to a good start on the basic tools. And the basic tools, you'll find them under essentials. Now, with what I just did, imagine this. Um, we'll do the holiday card. After Carly shows you a couple, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, and actually I downloaded this from Adobe Stock. We'll take a snow globe like this and use it more, or some more of the uh, advanced tools. We'll convert it into this. All right. So, Carly, I'm going to pass it off to you now. Thank you, Vanelli. Okay, I'm going to share my screen again. And get my Got slides it. up. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can see this? Yes, yes, there's your slideshow. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about digital compositing, which is a modern form of collage and mixed media art, which has been around uh, probably a hundred years. Um, artists like Picasso, Matisse, this is a Klimt picture called The Kiss. They all use mixed media. Mixed media was born out of an art movement for desire of artists to break free from constraints in traditional artistic mediums to explore new ways of expressing themselves. And isn't that what's kind of happening right now in our uh, digital photography world? We are just pushing the limits with editing right now in ways that we were never able to do. By combining different materials, techniques, artists could experiment with texture, depth, and visual storytelling in ways that were not possible within the confines of a single medium. Um, this is a work of Picasso. Uh, he put different uh, collage and materials into one piece to create a whole new piece. Another piece of Picasso's work and then this is Matisse work. He used to do little cutouts uh, of different paper. Uh, he used to be a painter, but then because of some illness, he couldn't do that anymore. So this is, was his later work, um, very famous later work, cutting out these pieces and then putting them together to make a single collage. We could also do this in digital art and create our own different digital mixed media art. And to do that, um, you would use different visual elements and they can create a whole new stunning, surreal and imaginative images. It allows you to unleash your creativity and produce visuals that were not previously possible with our traditional cameras. You can achieve a painterly look from your photographs by using this method without having to digitally paint the pixels. Um, so you would need a software that's capable of stacking several layers on top of one another. Luminar is one. Lightroom is not one because you cannot work in layers in there, but Photoshop is one. You would use a pre-made painterly background. Overlays and textures are often used. And then you're going to use these different layers and sometimes masking and blending modes and changing the opacity uh, to create a single image. If I'm getting too far ahead and you're feeling lost, don't worry, I'm gonna show you this step by step. So basically you're taking your photo and you're adding these different layers to go from one to the other. So what you would do is gather your, your resources. Of course, you're gonna start with a photo, then you could use different overlays, different brushes that are overlays, textures and backgrounds, and as you're layering this, you're creating a whole new visual piece, kind of like Picasso did. So I often find a photo that inspires me. It needs to be something that inspires you because you're going to spend more time with this edit. It's not going to be like a quick edit. You're going to get intimate, intimately involved with your photo. So find something that really 
sparks your creativity and inspires you. Overlays are uh, PNG files. And simply what that means is that the parts that you see are there and the white behind it is opaque. So you don't see it. So when you overlay it on top of something, you're just seeing the parts that are painted. You could find overlay brushes that will give you that painterly brush without having to paint with a brush. And then uh, textures. You could use textures too to create more depth and give it that more authentic painterly look. And it all starts with a painterly background. And you find something that kind of matches your imagery, the color palette, or a direction you want to take your photo to. So I'm going to talk about now and then I'm going to demonstrate it. You find a photograph, you're either going to mask the photograph or use op opacity and then find a painterly background that you like. Then you're going to start layering them, blending these two together with opacity. Then you could add some of those PNG files and then you create a final composite. So you can go from here to here. But there's some strategy involved, and I just want to talk about that real quick. <laughs> My strategy, and what I find that works, is focus on details where you want the viewer to focus on. So if you want, of course, the viewer to focus on this bird here, this is where all my technique and work is going to help focus on that particular image. Um, I'm going to hop over to this one, less is more, even though you're adding all these different backgrounds and overlays, you don't want to get too carried away where the viewer's eye is just bouncing all over. Um, you want to make sure you have a subject that they're focusing on. Color harmony is really important. So when you're finding your painterly backgrounds and all these overlays, you want to make sure there's a color harmony throughout the imagery. And it's playful. Sometimes this is just a process. You're not, um, a lot of times when I go into this, I don't know how it's going to end up until I get into it and start playing with it, moving things, enlarging or shrinking things um, to make it bigger or smaller to I kind of like where it's going. So allow yourself to have a process oriented mind before having it has to look a certain way at the end. So you could achieve, again, the painterly look by using these textures, these overlays, changing the blending modes. The artistry is in how you choose how to assemble these different layers. That's where you are um, the conductor of this orchestra. You may be given a painterly background or go seek one, but how you choose to put that painterly background with that imagery is you being the conductor and deciding how that's all going to work together. I have this winter collection I just created. You can find it at my website, um, and I'm going to show you how to do this. So I'm going to open Luminar now. And I'm going to show you how I got from this photo to this painterly background. 